Alrighty, so here we have, I think, one of the biggest debates between left Twix and right Twix <laughs> uh, that's happened, in my opinion. Right. And that's actually, uh, what is really the difference between the FTM 300 and the FTM 200? And there is differences. That's the biggest thing I think people do. So right at top level, we'll call it, is, is we have the 300, which is, as you see on there, dual receive, uh, two bands, and it's actually tr a true dual receiver. So if you are into satellites, if you're into any of that fun stuff on there, you can actually do the split on there. In addition, you can actually run Fusion on the A or the B band. Now, one of the other nice things that the 300 has is, is that you can actually do cross-band repeat, which a lot of people, that's a big thing people want to do, but the 300 will allow you to receive an AMS mode and then cross over to FM. So the nice thing is, it's like, let's say you got a FT60 or you got an analog handheld of some sort, you want to listen to your Fusion repeater, you can't, obviously, with the analog handheld if you're doing that, but you can set this up to the Fusion repeater on the A-band, AMS, or B-band, whatever you want to do, and then the other side it will repeat back on FM. On there. It does not cross-band repeat in digital. There's a reason for that, and that's because of our Fusion protocol. We didn't want a repeater to repeat a repeater because if you think about it, it's I make a photocopy, then I make a photocopy of the photocopy, and then I make a photocopy of the photocopy, and then it's going to sound horrible, right? So that's that's the big thing about the 300. They It also has the SD card slot, has where you can also put in the actual speaker microphone on there. Now, the 200, why is the 200 different? Well, people don't want dual receivers, okay? They want a simple basic radio. But the 200 does have hidden features on there, which a lot of people don't realize. One, it's the same layout and design for the most part as the 300, except that it's only one receiver. But <clears throat> you actually have the PMG functionality in it. Now, the PMG functionality on the 200 is a little different because it offers scanning PMG. So normally with PMG, you put the five frequencies in there, you gotta keep an eye on the display. The FTM 200 has scanning PMG, where what you'll do is it will scan it, the minute it stops on something, it's gonna go ahead and receive it. Now, other nice thing about the 200 and the 300 doesn't have is you actually can change the colors on the display on there. So you could do the red, white, and blue on there, which a lot of people like, especially a lot of nighttime drivers and stuff, they like the red display on there. But really, a neat feature of this one, and we talked about it on our, our, our YouTube video that we did on there for education on the overview of it. You can actually set the 200 to do APRS on the B band while still doing the A side. So that's really the big two differences between the 300 and the 200 on there. You know, a lot of people say, well, why, why would I go with the 200? Well, let, let, I'll be honest with you. I'm lazy. I'm <laughs> lazy. Um, when it comes to nighttime, I like to sit in my easy chair. But like for this one, does the PDN functionality on there. So all I simply do is take the control head and I bought one of those like cup holder mounts, take and put the head because the head is a nice part on here. I'll pop it off here real quick. The head has the screw mount in there. So I basically get a nice size screw head on there, slide it into that cup holder mount, and then I run the actual cable down, whoops, um, to, I'll just leave it there for now. Down. Receiving APRS right now. Is it? Yeah, we, we've been running APRS on there and it's been receiving great in here. But then what I do is I just run the um, extension cable with it down next to me, put the radio right there. Then the next thing I know is all of a sudden, hey, guess what? I can do wires X, I can talk on the local repeater, it's great. That's a really good breakdown. So this is the one I have in the truck right now, and I ran APRS the whole way up here from Texas. So. Yeah, and detachable front. Yep, they're, they're, they're like I said, it's it's almost like they're they're kind of sisters. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it has it now. That's the nice part about it too is is that it does come with a, a length cable, and I'll show you here here here's my here's my little thing. People are calling it the charcuterie board. <laughs> so here's the question. How do you travel in a rental car with it? So um, my wife likes charcuterie. We'll notice she's missing kind of the board. But basically, the reason I brought this up here was to show you this, the new bracket system on the 200, 300, and 600. So all you do is you just put in the screws there. Now, there it is. On the way here, I wanted to change it over. I took this one out. I slid the 200 right into place. Good to go. So, so that's the nice, the nice functionality on there. The other thing too is, is that the cooling factor on there, you have actually the cooling factor in there. It, it sucks the air up and through here now, which is a lot better on there. And one other thing that people don't realize, you can do the recording on these with the SD card, but then this has Bluetooth in it. You can buy Bluetooth for this one and you can buy Bluetooth for this one also too. 
So. Good, that's perfect. Thanks, John. Yeah, no Thanks. problem. Hope you guys have a good show today. I think we will. Okay, good.